All right. Hurricanes are basically um, evaporation events which get out of control. They occur in very warm oceans, okay, where the energy is highest because they represent a huge amount of energy. Hurricanes are also known as cyclones in places like the South Pacific, Australia, uh, the Indian Ocean. They're called cyclones. They're called typhoons in East Asia, in Japan and in China, typhoons. But in the Atlantic, they're usually called hurricanes, and I guess in the Eastern Pacific as well. Hurricanes are a fact of life in the Lesser Antilles. Above 10 degrees north of the equator, you're always going to get hurricanes. And so vegetation communities must deal with these hurricanes. We all know what hurricanes are. They're basically these weather systems which are associated with massive amounts of rainfall and very high destructive winds of over 150 kilometers an hour or so. So vegetation communities must, must have some sort of adaptations to survive these massive amounts of rain and the high winds. So some of these adaptations are being able to coppice from broken stems uh, so that vegetation you quite often see in hurricane prone areas tend to be small stemmed, multi stem from a single rootstock. Uh, as evidence of that tree being snapped off at some stage by a hurricane in the past. This leads to relatively small stature forests. Okay, so the forests tend to have small, uh, not short trees, and very uh, low um, stem thickness, so not very thick stems. Okay. All of this because they are periodically blown down by a hurricane. Vegetation also can have flexibility to allow the vegetation to ride out the storm. So they can bend, okay, rather than break. So they can bend by the wind. And uh, a lot of the palms are like this. You see pictures of those coconut palms being blown over, well, bent over and, and being blown. But as soon as the wind is, uh, eases up, they soon spring back to their original uh, posture. So how do hurricanes form? Why do we get hurricanes? And there's a nice picture of a big massive hurricane. I think that might be um, Ivan, which hit um, New Orleans. Uh, as you can see, it's huge system, many hundreds of kilometers across. Okay, so what is it? Basically, it's evaporation gone mad. Quite often what happens is that uh, evaporation occurs at the ocean level and the, the um, moisture rises. Okay, and it, once it reaches a certain level, it's cold enough, it stops rising, and all the moisture uh, precipitates out. Okay? Well, what happens there is that you form a low pressure system um, underneath these areas and the air tries to rush into there. And what it does is it starts this whole system spinning. And when the system spins, it creates a low pressure system in the middle. And that low pressure system, um, that low pressure system, uh, creates a more organized spinning and that spinning just accelerates and accelerates until you get the development of a cell which has low pressure at the bottom, high pressure at the top, but these cells are rotating around it and the amount of energy contained within this cell is immense and this is the hurricane. So where do hurricanes go? Well, this uh, is a download from the, I think it's the National Hurricane Center, which is based up in the US. Uh, they put up uh, a lot of energy into tracking hurricanes and so on because they are so destructive. This is uh, a plot of all the tropical cyclones or hurricanes which occurred 
between the mid-September and the end of September from 1852 to 2006. So these are all the tropical hurricanes which occurred during that time, between you know, the second half of September uh, in those years. And it gives you a fairly good idea of where the hurricanes uh, are most frequent. You can see Trinidad down here. It's really outside of that belt of hurricanes. You don't really get hurricanes in Trinidad and insurance companies reflect that. They, uh, they will um, allow uh, yacht owners to insure their boats if they make sure that th their boats are outside of this hurricane belt during um, times like September when hurricanes are around. Uh, this is another diagram which shows you the frequency or the likelihood of encountering a hurricane uh, during August. Okay, And these are the main hurricane tracks, these arrows here in the Caribbean. You can see that the Lesser Antilles is right in the middle of the most likely area that you are going to get hurricanes. So the, the vegetation on the Lesser Antilles had better be adapted to uh, hurricanes. Interestingly, Cuba seems to be in a little bit of a, a bubble there all by itself. It's probably because the hurricanes tend to come from the east and they're blocked by the island of Hispaniola. So if they hit Hispaniola, they tend to either divert around or they just lose power. So you don't get hurricanes uh, get moving over Cuba somewhat. It doesn't mean that Cuba doesn't get hurricanes. It, it does quite a lot, however. Again, Trinidad there is in the... Well, you can get hurricanes there, but it's much less likely than you would get up in the Lesser Antilles there. So what do hurricanes do? Here are some pictures pulled off the web which shows destructions caused by hurricanes. And the main thing is that the canopy is basically destroyed. It's stripped away, so you get a complete opening up of the canopy and the sunshine goes right the way through to the understory. The dominant vegetation, the trees and so on, are all destroyed. There's no trees left. Okay, so these are all different uh, scenarios or different areas showing the impacts of hurricanes. Um, different trees will get damaged in different ways. This is a black mangrove. Uh, we get black mangrove here. It's Avicinia germans um, down in Karani Swamp. Gumbo Limbo, we call that uh, naked Indian here in Trinidad. That also just gets broken off as you can see there. You can see this palm in the background seems to have survived and that's why an example of a, a species which has great flexibility so it can bend before the winds and not actually get broken off. Sea grape, which we have here in Trinidad, also gets massively fractured off. But you can see some of the responses of these plants to being broken off. You see the gumbo limbo there, the uh, naked Indians, re-sprouting from epicormic buds in the trunk, and the same with the sea grape. So it can survive pretty well, uh, even though it's been severely damaged by this hurricane. It's not. It's damaged, but it's not killed. It can re-sprout again, and that's what it's doing there. Some more pictures of destruction from uh, cyclones. As you can see, uh, one thing which happens after a cyclone is quite often a massive regeneration event. All these seedlings start germinating. That's because the uh, canopy has been opened up and the light is allowed to come down. So all these resources are there. So, so um, seeds buried in the um, soil will tend to germinate and start growing straight away. And here is some yeah. coppicing. So this tree here would have been snapped off and it sent up several uh, sprouts from the same stump. This one here too, it's got several sprouts from the same stump. And this is an adaptation of being uh, snapped off during a hurricane. So it will re, um, recreate its uh, photosynthetic area as quickly as possible by uh, 
sprouting up these branches from the existing rootstock. So these plants are not killed by being snapped off. Instead, they re-sprout from that rootstock. And that's a good adaptation for hurricane for um, forest, don't you think? If you had a um, tree which just died when it got snapped off, it probably wouldn't last long in a hurricane-prone uh, forest. All right. Okay, now to the last part of the lecture, uh, topography climate interactions. What happens... Um, okay, so most of the Lesser Antillean Islands have got rainforest on them. Yet, looking at the rainfall patterns, as you move further north, you would expect that they wouldn't have any rainfor rainforest on them because they don't have enough rainfall throughout the year. So where are those rainforests come from? Why do they have rainforests there? And the answer is topography. The, the higher altitudes, uh, rainfall can be trapped by um, a process called orographic rainfall. Okay? Um, particularly on these steep volcanic islands. And what orographic rainfall is in this um, uh, diagram here is when the moist air from the sea, particularly um, from the trade winds, which blow from east to west, rises up over the top of these mountains. Okay, so the wind will blow up these mountains because they are forced to rise because of them. And th this is... Uh, an area in Costa Rica, uh, but it, it gives you the same process that you would see on many of the Lesser Antillean Islands. So the rainfall will tend to fall on the eastern sides of the islands. And at the top of the islands, you will quite often find this cloud forest. Now a cloud forest is a area of forest where cloud sits on top of the peaks for a substantial a number of days in the year. And what this does is it blocks the sunlight and creates a dwarf type of vegetation. It has less sunlight so it can photosynthesize less so it can't grow as tall. It's also on this crest that you would tend to find uh, thinner, more skeletal soils which also lead to a stunted stature. So cloud forests occur right at the peak of these islands. And these cloud forests can form at, at many different altitudes. They can form from as low as um, you know, 600 meters all the way up to uh, you know, 1,200, 1,500 to 2,000 meters. You would get these cloud forests. And they really are concentrated on these peaks where you would tend to get permanent, almost permanent clou um, cloud formation or cloud caps. The good example in Trinidad is El Tacuch. If you look up at El Tacuch on, on a day when it's nice and bright and sunny, El Tacuch may have a nice cloud cap sitting on top of it, and this is the result of that. And therefore, El Tacuch has a cloud forest on top of it. But orographic rainfall is basically where the air is forced upwards by the mountains. Because it's forced upwards, it tends to cool. Okay. It tends to cool because the pressure on it lessens. And the pressure on it lessens because it is going upwards. And so there's less air above it pressing down on it. As the air cools, as it rises, air within it can no longer stay in a gaseous form and it begins to condense. It condenses around dust particles in the atmosphere and so on. And those uh, droplets of water get larger and larger and larger until they're no longer supported by the atmosphere and they fall as rain. Okay, And that is orographic rainfall. On the western sides of the Lesser Antillean Islands you quite often have a drier area. Okay, It's pretty much rainforest all on this uh, on the upper slopes of the island and then on the fringes, on the, particularly on the west and the southwest of the island, 
you would tend to get drier forest. Okay. And this diagram you have lowland rainforest, but it's usually not rainforest on the Lesser Antillean Islands because it's uh, simply too seasonal there for rainforest to be supported. So that's orographic rainfall, and that is the reason why we would tend to get rainforest on these Lesser Antillean Islands, particularly the um, volcanic Lesser Antillean Islands, which rise above 100 meters above sea level. You will still have the dry scrub at sea level, and also on the western and the southern sides of those islands. Okay. So what does this mean for biogeography, for ecology? It means that uh, when we have this topographic effects, we will tend to have islands of rainforest within those islands. And this has great implications for parks, past species distributions and for species distributions today. Because of this, uh, islands within islands, isolation in rainforests and high level taxa tends to be much more prevalent in the Lesser Antilles. So we tend to have larger percentages of species endemic due to the islands in these higher rainforest areas compared to the drier scrub-like thickets. Okay, so places like St. Lucia will tend to find their endemic plants and animals up in the rainforests. And the scrub forests around the fringe of the island will tend to be have species which are found throughout the islands because they're in periods of lower sea level they would have spread throughout those islands. Okay. Alright, so let's summarize what this lecture was all about. First of all, we saw Caribbean islands were mountainous volcanic islands or they were flat limestone islands. The, the climate was tropical and with constant temperatures. However, rainfall varies across the Caribbean islands and therefore the ecosystem varies. Mountainous rainfalls, mountainous islands support rainforest outside of the rainforest zone by orographic rainfall. And finally, isolation of rainforests in time and space supports speciation and endemism in those Caribbean islands. Okay, so take a look at this lecture. You can watch it as many times as you want, and hopefully you'll be able to uh, remember some of this stuff. Please read the um, readings from the uh, assigned to this lecture. I will expect you to have read them. Um, when I'm setting the exams and so on. Okay, thanks for joining me and until